Hey everybody, Jennifer Schaus here, coming to you live today from Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us in our webinar Wednesday series. Uh, today we're going to cover SpaceX, but before we do, we've got a couple uh, slides to get through. Uh, first, as a reminder, that all of our webinars are complimentary and recorded. You'll be able to get today's recording on our YouTube channel, which is complimentary. We've got over 600 government contracting videos on the channel. Uh, if you're looking for the PowerPoint slides from today, you can jump over to the slideshare.net site. It's uh, a free site and you can log in with your LinkedIn credentials in order to get the PowerPoint uh, because we do have a couple links in here today. Uh, a little bit about us. We are based in downtown D.C. and provide professional consulting services for established government contractors, so those um, who are currently generating revenue. Uh, we've also got some market intelligence reports and other services that we provide. If you want to find uh, more about us, just hop over to our website, which is jennifershouse.com. In the event that your company is selling to federal government contractors, we have opportunities for you to advertise in our newsletter. We could post on LinkedIn for you. You can run a webinar with us. You can advertise in our webinars. Uh, there's a host of opportunities uh, to reach government contractors. Uh, simply shoot us an email to the hello at jennifershouse.com and um, we'll send you our media kit. Some webinars that we've got that are um, outside of this series uh, are listed here next week on Thursday. And the following Thursday, we've got PSA Schedule Basics Part 1 and 2. Those are complimentary and it's hosted by the Small Business Office at the VA. The links are also on our website under the event section. Even though these are not truly events, they're webinars. That's where you can find them on our website. Um, August 12th, um, I'm sorry, 31st of August at 12 o'clock, uh, we are covering another webinar with our friends over at Visible Thread on the GSA schedule and how to use it as a federal business development tool. The link is there on the slide. It's also on our website under the event section. Uh, with the SBA, we're putting on a webinar on subcontracting opportunities within the Veterans Affairs. Uh, the link is here on this slide. It's also on our website under the events section. Uh, we'll reach into next month and on September 14th, cover the GSA schedule requirements, proposal prep, and, what ne and what's next. That's with the Virginia PTAC Apex Accelerator. Uh, October 26th, we then cover capitalizing on the new fiscal year contracts. So that'll be FY24 contracts. Uh, these are all complimentary webinars. Your registration link is there at the bottom of the screen. Again, it's also on our website under the event section. October 19th, we're uh, jumping back into GSA schedules with um, our friends at GovSpend and FedMine. As we look into next year, February of 2024, some marketing tactics for federal contractors. It's basic. It's a very basic 101 class. So if you're just starting out, this will be helpful to you. If you're uh, well versed in government contracting, uh, this may seem a little elementary to you. Again, it's complimentary and it's hosted through the Virginia PTAC. For anyone that uh, is still working on their uh, GSA Oasis Plus. Uh, proposal, we do have support packages available, um, including review services. So shoot us an email to the hello at jennifershouse.com and we'll get you connected to the right person on our team for that. Okay, the reason our webinars are complimentary is because we've got some great sponsors, so we want to give them all a shout out and make sure that you spend a couple minutes uh, visiting their websites and connecting with them. So first we wanna thank our friends at GovEvents. They're the premier platform for posting events related to government and government contracting. You can find all of our webinars and our events on GovEvents.com, as well as recordings from our past 600 plus webinars. We also wanna thank Tom Johnson and his team at Set Aside Alert. They're the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, and 8A firms. Visit setasidealert.com for more information. The Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars, and we want to thank them for posting our events and webinars on their calendar. 
on the Virginia PTAC uh, at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to established government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore services, review homework recommendations, register for live trainings, and find useful links to agencies and other self-directed learning. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on your business location. One-on-one -on -one counseling is, however, limited to eligible client companies. The Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce has their next council meeting on Tuesday, August 22nd. If you want to attend, please contact Alicia Field. Her email address is there at the bottom for more information. FBC, this is the Federal Business Council, event for the ultimate engagement channel to bring government and industry together. 68% of government personnel report that they attend more than one event each year. FBC has worked with government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government achieve its goals. This includes agency industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, tech expos, and offsite meetings. FBC provides full life cycle meeting planning and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FBC has the experience, systems, and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fbcinc.com. Bidspeed. Uh, Bidspeed. Do you want help winning government contracts? Bidspeed helps and you win. Find opportunities from every federal, federal, state, local, and public source in the U.S. Bidspeed can help you find teaming partners, incumbent point of contact, expiring contracts, and also provide you with a compliance matrix and proposal templates. They're also an official partner of the SBA 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get started today at Bidspeed. Com. GovSpend and FedMine, uh, they have provided the data in our uh, webinar this, seri this year, the series, as well as the past series. Um, they've got data from uh, a variety of sources. Uh, they also include analytics and insight for government contractors. They integrate data from 18 federal data sources and sets and create a single database that places the key data points at your fingertips. The platform provides contract opportunities within thousands of entities at federal, state, and local educational organizations. With the acquisition of FedMine in 2021, the combined GovSpend and FedMine solution empower teams to make smarter decisions. Thank you to GovSpend and FedMine for providing uh, the data in the webinar series this year and as mentioned in the previous years as well. Okay, I think that's it for our sponsors. A little bit about our webinar series and the schedule that we are uh, running on. Uh, again, the webinar is complimentary and recorded. Uh, all the recordings are on our YouTube channel. If you give us a like over there or subscribe to our YouTube channel, it doesn't cost you anything and you'll be alerted of any time we are uploading a, uh, a webinar to the channel. If you're looking for any of the PowerPoints from the past 600 plus uh, webinars, they're all over on the slideshare.net site. Here's the schedule, everything in red we have uh, previous, we have covered. The links are on our website under the top 40 tab. And here's our schedule. Uh, we're today at August 9th, we're gonna cover uh, SpaceX. Next week is Oshkosh Defense. And we'll finish out the season on November 15th, uh, which is a Wednesday, covering GlaxoSmithKline. Assuming that most companies that are on the webinar are here to learn about some contracting opportunities with these large businesses, uh, we thought it was important that you are also familiar with the FAR and the DFARS, so the rules and the regulations that the contracting officers must abide by when they are awarding contracts. But the FAR and DFARS are going to have flow down clauses on subcontracting, so uh, you should be well versed in what that entails and what would be required of you as a subcontractor. So FAR Part 44 covers that, and then DFARS will be for defense contracting, pretty much the same thing, uh, but it's Part 244, and it will have its own contracting nuances. Some other webinars that we've done on subcontracting, we actually kicked off this series uh, in February with a fairly long session that had six different components on subcontracting, as you can see here at the top of your screen, covering these various uh, components of subcontracting. Those are all available complimentary on the YouTube channel. Uh, in 2020, 
two, I believe it was, we covered um, all 15 federal departments and subcontracting opportunities within each of those. And over the years, we amassed a library of over 30 plus webinars on more of the tactical and strategic topics uh, related to subcontracting. Again, all complimentary, all on the, the YouTube channel. So best practices, if in fact you are a small business and pursuing contracts with SpaceX or any other uh, business, first you need to define what it is you do and do well uh, and be known for that in your industry. Uh, as you start adding services uh, and or unrelated products uh, to your offering, you're going to complicate uh, and confuse your customers. So be very specific about what it is you are bringing to the table. What is that value? Uh, and your value can be a superior uh, capability, something unique to your business. It could be a lower price. Uh, you could be bringing a relationship from an existing uh, contract that you have with an agency or department to the prime. Uh, you've got to bring something other than uh, just saying that you found an opportunity or just saying that you, uh, you check a box for small women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone or something along those lines. Um, as you look for potential partners, you're going to use all of the data sources that are out there. There are so many in this sector that are complementary that makes this sector so unique. Um, so leverage the SAM.gov data, USA Spending, FBDS, some of the GSA sites for pricing, and so forth. Um, do your homework. Uh, this includes signing up for Google Alerts for news about the company or and or the department and agency that you are pursuing contracts with. Uh, read that information. Uh, if the company is publicly traded, follow their stock price. Uh, were they affected by COVID or not? What is the current climate? Are there mergers and acquisitions that are happening within the company? Who are they partnering with? Do they have any joint ventures, mentor protege agreements? All of this, again, is public data. Um, and then you want to customize your capability statement for that particular opportunity, meaning the specific RFP, that solicitation. And you also want to customize the capability statement for the potential partner. Um, handing them a generic capability statement is not going to get you anywhere because these, uh, the recipient of that is probably getting hundreds and thousands of capability statements per day, per minute. Um, so do something that's going to set you apart and show that you've done your homework. Once you uh, have this piece of the homework done, I would suggest then registering on their website as a small business. Most of these large businesses do have a section on their site where you can, in fact, register if there's an opportunity to upload a capability statement. Again, make sure it's customized, sign up for their newsletter, uh, find out what associations they are members of, what events are they attending, what trade shows are they going to, are there speaking opportunities where uh, they will be present, and, and speaking. Um, if so, then find out who is speaking. Connect with them on LinkedIn with a specific message and not just a checkbox to connect with them. Look for the small business liaison officers, the program managers, and other people within the company that can help you advance to the next level. Again, you have to bring something to the table, so don't just ask them what they can do for you. That's not why they are there. You should have done your homework, again, to find solicitations and opportunities uh, that you are bringing to the large business. Okay, so with that, uh, we are covering today SpaceX. Uh, I think a, a household name that most people know, some basic info here, a uh, link to the website. You can also hop over to Space Exploration Technologies, which will give you uh, additional information. Should you want to be a supplier or small business um, subcontractor to the company, we suggest that you register there on the uh, supplier uh, registration site. What we're looking at here in the SAM.gov database is in fact based on uh, this UEI number, so all of the data that we're looking at at. This is actually old information for Jacobs, I apologize. Um, so we are looking at SpaceX today. Uh, LinkedIn information here, um, SpaceX uh, company LinkedIn page. Um, we obviously know that this is uh, a company of Elon Musk, one of his many. And then here are some contacts on LinkedIn that we found for you. Uh, Capture Manager, 
this person's probably out there hunting for opportunities, so they're not going to be uh, probably the, your right point of contact if you're a small business. Government affairs is probably more involved with lobbying. Uh, Angela Stever is your contracts director, and she is um, overseeing the GSA schedule or her contact information is listed for that contract vehicle. So you probably need to uh, continue to do some sleuthing there to find out who your, your right contact is. On the civilian side, um, we've got uh, a little bit of revenue here, uh, not a ton, and this is really not the focus of the company, or at least uh, the dollars are not indicating that. Um, there should really be no surprises when we get to uh, the big bucks, but um, they start posting some dollars here in 2021 with a $37,000 contract at AG. Uh, the next year for fiscal year 2022, their revenue uh, greatly increases to 1.1 million uh, thanks to some nice work at Commerce. I'm not sure exactly what that was for. That's uh, where it's incumbent upon you to, to dig into the details, uh, followed by a nice size contract at the VA uh, and some work at State Department. When we look at 23, we've got some more numbers on the board and they will probably, in my guess, surpass what they did in 2022, but uh, obviously that's not definitive uh, because their largest contract, again, was with Commerce in, uh, last fiscal year and it, it looks somewhat, um, uh, well, obviously a lot smaller uh, this year. However, numbers are not complete and there's still time left in Q4, which is usually where we see the bulk of the purchases. So um, it will be interesting to see what uh, what commerce, um, what SpaceX posts for work that they're doing at commerce. Um, the bulk of the dollars for 2023 are showing at home at DHS. Um, so again, uh, devil is in the details here where it will be incumbent upon you to dig in to find out uh, what exactly they are doing uh, at DHS. On the defense side, uh, numbers are a lot uh, more significant here, but still not the bulk of the work. Uh, 409 million in 2019, dips a little bit in 2022, uh, perhaps due to COVID, not, uh, not sure. It's uh, hard to tell just by looking at these numbers, just making some uh, assumptions. They come back uh, strong in fiscal year 2021 with uh, more than doubling the revenue from 2022 on the defense side. Uh, they continue then to see growth in 2022, fiscal year 2022. Um, and not looking great for 2023, but keep in mind that these numbers again are, as we mentioned every week, three months behind for defense contracting. So um, there's still gonna be some decent numbers that are posted for the Air Force or DOD headquarters or even uh, the Navy. Uh, Navy looks like um, it could be slowing down, but, um, and then Army is not showing anything, but again, there could be something to post in Q4 um, that has not been, um, uh, that's not yet visible or not yet reconciled on uh, FBDS or SAMP.gov. So keep in mind, these numbers are three months behind and we still, we'll have um, probably some decent contracts that are gonna be showing up here in Q4. So more numbers, uh, greater, greater revenue on the defense side versus civilian, but where the real action is at here for SpaceX is with the independent agencies. Um, if you look at the totals as we go across uh, 2019, close to a billion, they drop a little bit in 2020. Um, again, this is all based on NASA contracts. Um, they come back strong in 2021. Um, 2022 looks great at um, 2 billion, uh, 1.5 for 2023, and we still could see some additional numbers. They've got a, a blip on the radar, which would be a blip on the radar for them, almost 20,000 with the EPA. Again, not sure what that is. Um, and again, uh, Q4 is not yet over. So uh, it would uh, behoove you to dig deeper into the details if you look at these contracts. Top five NAICS codes, I don't think you're gonna be surprised here. Uh, bulk of the work is with non-scheduled chartered freight air transportation, um, and then kind of somewhat evenly split between the guided missile and the R&D. Uh, numbers look pretty strong though with the uh, the first NAICS code, and let's actually look at these in details. Um, 
And this just mirrors what we saw on the last page. So the 481212 for the, um, the air transportation and then the R&D work um, is looking pretty significant. And then, so these top three for 2023 are really uh, doing the bulk of the work. Again, this is going to include both defense and civilians. So while if you're comparing numbers from 2022, fiscal year 22 to 23, uh, it may look a little bit smaller, but again, uh, we're three months behind on defense contracts. So those uh, will certainly um, each see a bump in their respective NAICS codes. On the civilian side, these are subcontracts. Um, VA, which is uh, what we saw previously, uh, would be worth digging into to find out what exactly they're doing there. Uh, on the defense side, more or less mirroring what we saw uh, in the previous slide. So some decent opportunities for subcontracting. Uh, the independent, uh, again, similar to uh, what we saw on um, uh, just the regular uh, contracts uh, with NASA. Um, and so again, it's it's really going to come down to if uh, if you're interested in working with them, doing a, a little bit more homework here. Uh, when we look at the subcontracts, we're not showing anything uh, in FSRS, um, and same thing here. So when we look at their GWACs, the government-wide acquisition contracts, they do have a GSA schedule. Uh, this is the gal up in the bottom right-hand corner. You've got some contact information. Uh, she is the individual. Um, that we showed on the, uh, the point of contacts, um, Angela Seaver, who is the contracts director. She's probably dealing more with the paperwork and not so much looking for subcontractors. Um, so just um, keep that uh, in mind. She's probably not going to be uh, your, your best entry point. Uh, for their contracts that are expiring that are valued at over 750K, uh, we've got a few here listed um, with the NAICS codes. Um, some without NAICS codes, but more the product, but they do have the product service code. Uh, so I would encourage you to look up the PSC codes if you don't have them memorized, which I do not, to find out what these contracts are for because they're significant in size. I'm assuming probably um, uh, these are probably NASA related, but uh, not definitive there on my, uh, uh, my, my guess. Some conclusions here, uh, just some general information about the company dates back to 20, uh, 2004, more or less, when Elon Musk uh, started the company. Uh, they started seeing some NASA uh, contracts uh, between 2010 and 2012. Um, and then obviously some, uh, some current uh, information there on that last bullet point about Starship, Starlink, and first crewed launches. Uh, we've got a couple new clips here. Um, or yeah, on the right-hand side on our next slide, we'll also have some uh, news clips. Um, and these are dating back to, uh, this is a CNN business clip, I think from 2022, um, with some additional information. Their competition obviously is uh, with no surprise, Lockheed and Northrop, uh, two other companies listed here, Blue Origin and Dynetics. I probably uh, encourage you to take a look at their SAM profiles um, as we mentioned, uh, contract vehicle is GSA schedule. I'm not sure how much is going through their schedule or what exactly is being procured through GSA, so uh, might be worth um, further investigation. Just a headline from 2022 from Space News um, about contracts that they've got, but they're primary uh, working with NASA and the Air Force um, on the International Space Station. Here's some other headlines um, that are a little bit more current from 2023. Uh, they've got satellites um, uh, as well as um, some government approval for launches. That's all we've got for, for SpaceX. Uh, would encourage anyone again to dig around on FBDS, SAM, and even the GSA site to find out what type of revenue they're doing. Um, more specifically with the independent agencies, defense, as well as civilian. If you want to work with them, it might uh, behoove you to hop over to the civilian contracts uh, where probably not as many people are going. I'm sure everyone's probably flocking to NASA and DOD just because um, those are well known. But uh, if you do some research on the civilian side, maybe Department of Ag is using some satellites for uh, weather and meteorology um, 
I'm, I'm just guessing, I don't know, but again, uh, this is where we kind of hand the baton off to you to give you the high level overview. And if obviously there's interest, you can dig a little further in all of the public websites that are out there, or you're certainly welcome to use any of the data aggregators uh, that exist as well, uh, who we mentioned, obviously many of them, uh, who are sponsors of the webinar. So thanks for participating. We hope to see you next week for Oshkosh Defense. And uh, you'll find today's recording um, probably later this afternoon on our website and the PowerPoint will be listed on uh, slideshare.net. So thanks again. Uh, there's a link to the YouTube channel on the slideshare.net. Um, here's the, the schedule. Um, and again, thanks so much for joining us today.